Hi, my name is Neil Ranasinghe. I am a parent of a survivor of childhood cancer. She had cancer a long time ago. And the reason we're here today is I'm talking to Gerorg, who a lot of you know, but I find what I want to try and help the paediatric oncology community is have a better understanding of Gerorg rather than just the people in the know understanding. So I've got a few questions for Gerorg and hopefully we're going to have a bit of a discussion and this will help all of you understand what's going on in Gerorg's world and how we all relate together. So let me introduce Gerorg. Um, he's the editor in chief of Onco Daily. He's in a paediatric oncologist from Armenia and much, much more, which we'll come to. I don't would you like to give a small description or introduction to yourself, Gerorg? Uh, thank you very much, Neil. Thanks for interviewing me. And um I mean, I'm, I'm going to keep it very short. So as you said, I'm a pediatric oncologist based in Armenia. I lead the Pediatric Cancer and Blood Disorder Center here. Um, and I'm the editor-in-chief of Onco Daily. Um, the rest, I mean, I think we can read in the bio. So we can move forward, I think. Okay. Thanks very much. Okay, so let's, let's get started. I mean... Um, Gerborg's being very modest here. He's involved with lots of stuff that we're going to come to shortly. We're just going to cover some of the key stuff. But first of all, I'd like to get to know a bit more about you. So I'm going to ask a few more questions that related to you and your career. So my profession is I'm a technical author. I'm in the private sector. I'm nothing to do with being a clinician, although, as you know, I do lots of voluntary work. So I think there's quite a big difference between how people in healthcare think and how people outside healthcare think. So when, when or why did you decide to get into, you, when did you decide that you wanted to be a doctor? Um, thanks for this question, Neil. Um, so, it, I, I mean, as far as I remember myself, I always wanted to become a doctor. My uncle was a doctor, he was a surgeon, and I think uh, having his role model in front of my eyes made a lot of influence on me, and that's what, that's how I decided to be a doctor. Later on, um, to choose pediatric oncology, I was uh, uh, greatly influenced by my mentor, uh, Dr. Samuel Danelian, who is the... Um, who is the founder of the modern... Uh, pediatric hematology oncology in Armenia and all these developments uh, in our country uh, in the, in this uh, field uh, happened under his uh, uh, supervision and under his leadership. Right. Oh, that's good. I, I was going to ask you why you chose to go into pediatric oncology. So you've you've got you've got me there. Right. Okay. Fabulous. So. You've been telling the world and telling the community about what's been going on in Armenia. So we, we get starting to get better knowledge of it. So can you tell me what it's like uh, for a child that has cancer in Armenia? Uh, Armenia is one of the most beautiful countries in the world, and I really mean what I say. It's really so warm, and it's it's a wonderful place to live and to be. But as many other countries, developing countries, it has its own limitations. Um, our survival rates currently are around 75%. Also, let's say in, in the United Kingdom where you reside, it's up to uh, 85. So there is some gap. But of course, there are countries which are less fortunate yeah, and where the survival is from zero up to 60%. So being a developing country, I think we have made a huge progress and um, it's not my opinion but rather people who visit Armenia professionals they they are kind of impressed with our progress and with what we are doing I, I won't hesitate to say and I'm not going to be modest about it that in Armenia pediatric hematology oncology um, and just in general hematology as well hematology and oncology are are the 
uh, fastest developing fields in not only in medicine, but in general, and also in medicine, I think it's one of the most developed ones. So uh, this is a this is a teamwork. This is a huge teamwork, and we have a wonderful team, wonderful people working in the field. So uh, and and it gives its its fruits. So of course there are limitations, but but still for a developing country, I think we are making a uh, huge progress. And um, right now and recent years, we started getting patients from also other countries. So from, from less fortunate countries where they, they have limitations. In Armenia for a child being diagnosed with cancer, we do our best that they don't have, uh, they don't have um, problems and they receive the same treatment what would receive a child diagnosed in London or in Paris or in Boston. So uh, right now, because of the help from the charities um, and the uh, also the governmental uh, basic uh, this package, so through this cooperation, the this is a triangle. Uh, the hospital, which is a public hospital, belongs to the government and like the Ministry of Health and also the charities in this triangle, we are trying to cover almost everything for the patient. So they don't have anything to pay. They don't have any out-of-pocket expenses. And um, even the food we are providing, meals, we are trying to cover other expenses. If they are occur occurring right now, we are thinking to build a um, uh, um, family house, which does not exist in the country, but we do some progress in that direction. So it's developing and there are a lot of things to do still, but I would give you just one example, like one number. We, uh, the, the uh, I mean, I made this cal calculation, but if we calculate per 100,000 people, the uh, rate of pediatric hematologists, oncologists in higher is now higher than in the United States. So even wow. with this like very unpopular profession, we made a lot of prog progress within last only four years. We admitted 14 fellows in our fellowship program for, for a three-year fellowship in pediatric hematology oncology. And these were the best students at the medical school. We made a very high um, uh, requirement bar for the entrance. And uh, this way we got the best of the best students. And now they have all the possibilities within their training they were able to, I mean, besides the training here, they did also in parallel different other trainings. I mean, we have a lot of Harvard graduates, like for one year program in cancer research or in leadership or in medical writing. We have people who get got training in different parts of the world, starting from um, I don't know, China Medical University in Taiwan, ending up in the uh, in uh, Boston area at Harvard Medical School or St. Jude Children's Hospital or Santa Ana Children's Hospital in Vienna. So it's really the, I mean, the diverse and uh, I, I'm really uh, currently having problems of following what our people are doing, both doctors, nurses. So just it's a, two days it's a ago. Nice problem one of one. To have. Yeah, I mean, it's like, the, it's developing itself already. So two days ago, one of our doctors got um, uh, a satan. She got the first prize at the St. Jude Conference in Memphis. The other day, uh, uh, so our psychosocial uh, head, Alisa, she was elected to lead the St. Jude, uh, to lead the PSYOP, uh, Psychosocial and Wellbeing, the co-chair of this task force. Uh, so... It's, I mean, every day there are some great news and I'm really happy for that. That's brilliant. I know, I know these things don't happen by accident. It must have been a lot of hard work from you and your team to make these things happen. I don't, I don't, I don't think many people realize quite the level of how, how much you must have advanced the state of healthcare for children with cancer in Armenia. So it sounds really, really encouraging. It's a huge teamwork. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, so, so one of my questions was, what's it like being a pediatric oncologist in Armenia? So it must, I guess it's not going to be that different from in a high-income country 
I'm guessing. Or would you uh, say there's key, very big, lots of key differences? So, of course, the resources are not that much as in, let's say, in in Chicago or in New York or you know, somewhere in Paris. It's not the same resources. And you don't have access to all these new uh, possibilities. And, and many things are, I mean, the doctors are doing things with they want be doing in, in other circumstances. Mm -hmm. So it makes the life a bit more difficult. But I think being a pediatric oncologist in Armenia, it's very good. You make a lot of uh, good work. Mm -hmm. You, I mean, uh, people appreciate it and you feel yourself uh, satisfied with, with what you are doing. You are making a progress. You are making huge uh, contributions for the society. And I think it's, I mean, it, it, it's really great that, uh, being, you know, it's being in a small country and in a developing country, it's, I mean, it's not just the you, uh, the negative part in the small country and in developing country there is a huge room for you to uh, create and to uh, mm. advance so in my opinion um, and I see really that in near future Armenia is going to become a local hub for the for the cancer and blood disorders for the whole region and by whole region I mean a big area not just like surrounding two three countries and we are like moving on that direction oh that's that's interesting because i was going to ask is it a problem with staff from armenia wanting to go and live abroad and um, move to another country do you are you experiencing that problem so we have zero brain drain zero although Almost all of our doctors got training abroad and they travel regularly. I mean, that's what I was meaning. I'm, I mean, mm -hmm. currently I'm not able to follow who is flying where. And I don't know really in the clinic right now who are uh, right now there or they are presenting somewhere in the globe or uh, traveling for work. Um, <laughs> so, uh, you know, you know, you. I, I got excited and I missed your question. Can you repeat? No, I just wondered whether whether it was an issue. The, oh, yeah, the, the brain, brain drain. drain. Talking, but you're saying if, if with the uh, so with the, the brain drain, we got the even a brain gain. We got yeah, even a brain right. gain. But no one is leaving the country. No, everyone is staying. This is a problem with many, many, many other other countries. But yeah, yeah. Uh, and we, I mean, we also have in all the, I mean, a majority of different areas we have this brain drain but we have zero brain drain in our field but just vice versa we have also people coming for example we have a great uh, one one of our great fellows who just finished and got an attending position mariam she came from uh from russia she was living there she is armenian by origin but she was living there and she come here came here we have our head of uh, uh, immune oncology lab, which we are just establishing a translational research lab. She is uh, one of the leaders in the field and she works in France leading a huge organization, I mean, huge team of experts. And I mean, she is between us here and France. And right. so it's like, we, we, we try to make sure that we create an atmosphere that, uh, that people come and work here and they enjoy the work that they are doing. Right, fantastic. Okay, um, I just want to talk about the, the Onkathon that was held earlier this year, that was absolutely fantastic. It was such a, it's great to see new ideas and new ideas that are working and seeing you and Shushan being on, online for hours and it literally hours and hours and both of you are great, still, moderating and putting up with it problems and questions so i'd like to ask how, how was it how was it for you and how did you come up was it you that came up with this idea is uh, say so how was it and who came up with it so shushan is another our superstar and she got the best training and she uh, i mean i was fortunate to be 
Uh, I mean, she she was one my student when she was doing oncology at the medical university. Then she became as a fellow, and then she got uh, during the fellowship program she got trainings in uh, Italy for one year, then in Austria another half year, then one year training at Harvard for this effective writing executive education. And many more. I, I even don't remember what kind of trainings she did. And now she is also the she is leading the she is the editor in chief of our newly launched Onco Daily Medical Journal, scientific journal. So she is going to lead it, and I'm sure under her leadership, it's going to become one of the top journals in the field. So um, the about the Oncotone, um, the idea came when we were. I was doing an interview with Dean Crow, uh, the amazing president of another amazing foundation, Rally Foundation. So she suggested we interview Onco Heroes Biosciences founders, uh, Ricardo and Cesare. And that's how it began. began. We discussed it with Berta, their chief of the staff, another great, uh, great person as the founders are. So we did, uh, uh, we had a discussion and Instead of interview, we said, I don't remember the idea who came first, who, who came mm -hmm. first, but we were having this discussion. We said, let's do a global oncotone, 24-hour oncotone. That's that's how we started. And within 24 hours, we had more than 100 like speakers from all over the world, leaders of the societies, head of sub cancer centers from different parts of the world, Japan, China, India, uh, uh, Russia, uh, Italy, France, UK, Jordan, Africa, uh, Americas, everywhere. Yeah. So basically we had all the coverage and regardless of uh, uh, regardless of any geographic uh, distribution or any other uh, differences. So everyone was united on that exact day on the International Childhood Cancer Day for that reason, to raise awareness about uh, our problems in the pediatric oncology field. Did you did you get any sleep during that 24 hours? Okay, can you repeat? So did you sleep at all during the 24 hours? Oh, he, I, got, I got some few hours, like maybe uh -huh. two, three hours sleep at that time. Shushan was doing, uh, and then I woke up. I remember it was early morning around. Yeah. 4 or 5 a.m. And I was, I think that if I'm not mistaken, the last interview was with with Eric, Eric Small, the president elect of ASCO, another great mentor of mine. And, right. and then we had we had one of the foundations and then we closed, if I'm not mistaken, because it was like, it was a full day. Yeah, yeah, it was incredible. It was absolutely amazing to be part and of it. We are going to continue it. it. But Right, yeah, good. I'm good. going to make it much bigger. Right. So you've met, you've mentioned about some of your staff and some of your experiences about working abroad and getting experience abroad. So there's a, there's a couple of things I'd like to ask you about that. One is, is there any advice you can give to people on how to get those experiences abroad? And secondly... Uh, I can imagine it's quite hard being away from home. What what what's it like being away from home for sort of quite long periods? Um, I think it's very very important to uh, to have a training outside of your home because it changes your uh, your uh, way of thinking. Uh, you discover new places, you discover people, you discover how people think outside of your uh, narrow uh, like place or surroundings. So it's it's very important. Uh, how to get the, that? I think if someone is searching, certainly will find it. I remember, I mean, I was spamming everyone with my emails back, back in the days that I'm, I was asking a question like, for like a possibility to do training and one would, if they find my uh, emails right now, they would think, I mean, I'm one of those people who who were doing, who are doing spam. So you got this um, heritage, come and take your money. So it's with this kind of very bad English at that, at the time. So, but, but 
I mean, it all it all it's all about persistence. So there is no way you can't get it. It's just if you you if you don't get it, it means you are not enough persistent. Right. I will okay. give, give this is example. For example, uh, two years ago, I was uh, selected for the ASCO Leadership Development Program. Uh, so it's like, if I'm not mistaken, it's 16 people, one or two are international, and I was one of them. And it's a, like a very high profile program and very competitive. Uh, but I was applying for that program, if I'm not mistaken, it's maybe five or six times. Right. I mean, it all means, I mean, that's why I say it, it, it's, there is no way you don't get it. It's just about the persistence, how much persistent you are. And about being away from home, of course, it's kind of, it, it can be difficult. It's a new place. It's a new area, new people, but also it's an opportunity. You meet new people, you make friends, you make, I mean, great memories. You make mm. wonderful connections when wherever I have been, um, I was I started my like uh, trainings outside of Armenia from Taiwan that then uh, then after Taiwan went to Senju then Vienna Brussels Germany uh, MD Anderson in Houston Dana Farber so I mean it was all and then again different places so it it was all around but wherever I went. It, it was a, an amazing experience. And first of all, meeting people, meeting wonderful people. And with almost, I mean, almost all of them, we are still keeping contact at least twice a year. We say, hey, how are you? So, mm. I mean, and I know that I have friends in different these places when I would need advice, I, I would call them. So this is very, very important in my opinion. I think what what you say about persistence is very interesting because I think I think that applies to whatever profession you're in because there's roles I've applied for and I've applied for once and I haven't got the role and I just thought okay that's that role isn't for me and maybe I've applied twice but I've never never applied more than twice so that's interesting that's it's all about persistence that's really thought provoking actually don't give up yeah yeah Right, so I'd like to I'd like to congratulate you on becoming the uh, president elect for SIA Asia. So it's it's very early days for you, but I wonder if you want to talk about what sort of things you've got in pl planned for SIA Asia, or, or what your focus areas are going to be. Uh, yeah, it's very early to to kind of um, say how it's going to go, but at least in my plans is to expand the membership first of all and i mean siop asia is the, like asia in general it's the it's the largest continent in the world yeah look we have india we have china in the it's already i mean majority of world yeah. population right yeah. <clears throat> and that's why asia should be more more active in my opinion and there is a lot of things we can do when we are all together that's why um, one of my first priorities is to expand the membership from every country in asia we should have very active members uh, who i mean who become part of siop mission the mission of curing every child treating every child uh, that no child stays without treatment so and to make sure that we kind of uh, break the disparities together we can solve all these problems that's what my mission is for the uh, for the term i'm going to be there and i'll do my best to do that of course there are other things as well but i would just focus right now uh, on that one i i would just trust this one that we need everyone's involvement every I, I think we we should make i mean it's the it's the main organization for the pediatric oncology professional it's the international society of pediatric oncology and we should make it like um so-called uh mandatory or something like that that 
everyone should feel, oh, I mean, how it's it's like that, that I'm a doctor or I'm a nurse working or I'm a survivor or I'm a caregiver and I'm not a member of the PSYOP. Yeah. <clears throat> so we need to make it like that. Th that way, PSYOP will become, I mean, I'm talking about PSYOP Asia will become the, the leading uh, source uh, of changes. And we will be able to make these changes all together. In, I'm I'm pretty sure. Yeah, the the potential is huge, isn't it? With countries yeah. like Pakistan, Indonesia, China, India, the populations are big, and there's there's a big workforce as well, isn't there? So and there are hundred. Yeah, just to give you an example. It's like hundred fifty, I think, if I'm not mistaken, members from India. Wow. I mean, we have 150 members from Armenia. Yeah, yeah. We are 3 million. India is 1.5 billion. Yeah. It's like we need to change this paradigm, I think. And we need to advocate for that. And this this way, and I, I'm, I'm pretty sure uh, that, uh, I mean, SIOP is an amazing organization. I'm really proud of being a member of SIOP uh, and SIOP community. And this is really a, an honor for me to become the president-elect for the Sayop Asia. And I'll do my best that, I mean, we we move it forward because uh, whatever we do, we do for kids with cancer. I think having, having something like targeting an increase in membership is good as well, because you can measure it as well, can't you? We can see what, what, what efforts you're doing are working and if it's not working, then we do something different. So we need to knock everyone's door. We need to go to, I mean, I mean, every from every single country, we need to have very active members. We we need to have doctors, we need to have nurses, psychosocial workers, uh, foundations, uh, survivors, caregivers, yeah. patients, patient advocates, everyone, like uh everyone in the field. Even even the people even people just be, who want to contribute for our mission, we need to bring all these people on the board, because this way we will be able to to uh, I think make a better uh, future for pediatric oncology. Well, but this this leads perfectly onto my almost one of my last questions. So, if you this so you can if you have needed something or wanted something. What would you ask for now? What would be your request? Or what would you like to tell people about? Because I know there's lots going on. You've mentioned ASCO to me and Oncothon coming up again and about the Onco Daily Journal. So what would you like to tell people about and what would you like to ask of people? To tell about what? I mean, there are different, uh, many, so many things or to ask about what? Okay, what's the what's the thing you're most excited about that's coming up in the future? I mean, I'm excited about whatever we are doing uh, every day. Different things. I'm. I mean, I come to the hospital early in the morning, and I I go home quite late. But um, and we do so many things, uh, and I'm excited about whatever we are doing. So. I want just like uh, solicit one of them, but um, in general, if I mean if we generalize, I th I mean I hope, and maybe I'm an optimist. Uh, I I am an optimist, but maybe I'm a bit more. Um, I I really hope that there is a peace, first of all, because uh, last year we were doing in December we did the. Uh, global, the first global summit on war yeah, and cancer. Yeah. It was very well attended. The opening address was done by the um, by the director general of WHO, uh, Dr. Tedros, and Her Royal Highness Princess Dina Mirad of Jordan uh, also gave an opening remark, and she was mm -hmm. with us all these days when for three days we were doing the the summit and when people from different parts of the world were presenting you know it's kind of you know as pediatric oncologists we can fight for one child's 
life for several years, and then a bomb comes and kills thousands. I mean, I don't know even how to call that. And uh, I think we need to talk about it more. And and we should not leave it to this uh, this field. I mean, this fragile uh, fragile globe to the politicians only. Pediatric oncology community and oncology community in general, and doctors, nurses, uh, patients. I mean, we know the value of uh, life. So we need to become the advocates, not just the health, but also the peace, but also everything good what it is in the in the, country, in the world. Because when we are leaving it to the politicians only, it's like mixing up all over the globe. Yeah. And, and I agree. Maybe I came to a little bit more philosophical to your uh, question, but that's what I would like to mention. No, and I, I agree. And you can can advocate and argue for the case of the children or the patients with cancer. And it's not supporting or not uh, not supporting either side, is, is it? It's just advocating for ceasefires or whatever, or for better care, rather than saying one side is wrong and one side is right. Because then it gets very polarised and very difficult. Yes. And it's purely yes. for, the, for, the, for the good of the children or ad adults with cancer. Is is there another what is there another one of these summits coming up? Yeah, the, the second summit, we are just in the process of deciding where it's gonna be the second one. We because the second one we are going to do hybrid, that's in our plans. There there is some uh suggestion to do it in Europe for uh un, under the uh, umbrella of one of the countries who want to host it I, i'm not going to disclose it now but there is some discussion but we'll see i mean we are in the discussion process right now and yeah and onco daily is growing you, you were asking also about the onco daily it's growing it in a short period of time we we established in um in may 2023 right one hour one year ago exactly one yeah. year ago and um and in one year it became one of the leading global platforms and when i read the comments from different people um uh, when i read the comments from different people from other countries uh i mean how they like it from different institutions just recently i was by a chance i was uh listening the podcast from uh, um, uh, a great human, uh, great uh, scientist, Oliver Bogler from NCI, he's leading the can uh, cancer training center there. So I, I didn't know that he was talking about Donko Daily. It was funny. I mean, I, I was listening to his podcast and then I found out that he was talking, he was giving a recommendation that I mean, I would uh, recommend you to follow Onco Daily. And he mentioned that he loves reading us. And we got these comments every day. Every single day, we get a lot of positive energy because we see that people value what we are doing. People um, people appreciate what we are doing. It, give, it gives us a lot of strength. And I'm pretty sure in, in the coming years, you will see that it's going to become a... a leading not just like uh, within the com oncology community but leading one of the leading platforms of bringing great news and great uh, resource a uh, media resource globally yeah, it's, it's amazing what you've achieved just in the space of a year it's now central to any social media anything that's going on in pediatric oncology then not in pediatric oncology only not right. in pediatric oncology is just one percent. Yeah, right. Oh, so maybe just, two or right. five. Oh, so I because I'm biased. Point. Right. So it's it's anything oncology related. Yes, we try maximally cover anything related to oncology from all over the globe, and it's not just that it's like covering, let's say, 
New York area or Washington DC area or Brussels area. So no, it's covering everywhere, including that places, but also starting from rural places in Africa, Asia, or elsewhere, South America, going up to the like uh, top-notch academic centers. So everywhere. And we are trying to give voice to everyone. Of course, our uh, uh, like we're just trying to make sure that it's whatever is published there, it's evidence-based. So it's not like, uh, I mean, we follow the evidence-based science, of course, medicine. Mm, yeah. Mm. Okay. So finally, my last question and something quite a bit lighter. So what's your what's your favorite food or what 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 would be your favorite meal on say who or where would you like to eat it because i know food appeals to lots of different people and i i don't know anything about armenia i'm ashamed to say or armenia uh, so uh it depends it depends when and where like yesterday with the uh, with my beautiful family, with my beautiful wife and two uh, amazing da daughters, we were uh, in one of the resorts. We went, we, we had a one day off. So just in the evening, uh, the day before, we drove around, around 8 p.m. there and came the other day. So we were thinking what to eat. I said, let's have this, um, we call it omelette with uh, tomatoes. This is like, this is very ordinary, very cheap food. And then with, uh, and then on a separate note, like this uh, greens with uh, greens, onions and cheese in Armenian bread. I mean, and with some salad with tomatoes and uh, cucumbers. So this is like very, I would say, Non fancy food, but uh, yeah, it I like makes a lot of sense. Food. Yeah, but I mean, so it, it all depends, really. I like I like good food, but it all all depends when, where. Right. I love a lot of ice cream. So when I was in yeah. Taiwan, I, I I love this. Maybe it's gonna be an advertisement, but I I won't hesitate to tell this. But I love McDonald's Sundays with the chocolate. Right. And I was eating it like I mean two three times a day, and some the 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 staff over there were calling me Mister Ice Cream. <laughs> yeah, it's quite it's quite che it's quite cheap in Taiwan as well, isn't it? The ice cream. So. Well, I don't remember. It was twelve years ago. Right, how cheap it was, but it was like many years ago. Right, fabulous. Okay, that's brilliant. So I'll just quickly um, wrap up. So. The, for me, the key thing to take away from here is persistence. And that's really made me think about how many times I apply or try and do stuff. And so everyone else, look out for Onco Daily, look out for next this year's Oncothon and for the Summit in War Congress. So, and follow, is it Oliver Bugle? Did you say his podcast? Uh, which one? The the person was it one you one you said from Oliver Bogler, yeah, Oliver yeah, Bogler. Oliver Bogler, right? Yeah, his okay. podcast is uh, he, um, it's on the NCI channel, Cancer Right. Okay. Have a look. Great. He's a great person. Yeah. Right. He was the Definitely. senior vice president at MD Anderson at the time when I was a postdoc there, and later on we then made a huge, very nice conference in yeah. Armenia. Uh, yeah. So I know him quite a long time okay fabulous and and to hear about where what you've done in armenia in the last few years as well is really it's really exciting and really encouraging so on behalf of all the parents of children with cancer and all the children with cancer thank you so much for everything you do and everything you will be doing and it's been great fun talking to you today thank you so much neil it's an right. uh, honor for me Right. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Goodbye.